Hi, I'm Nevada Foreclosure Consultant Damian Falcone, and this is part three of the Foreclosure Mediation Program video series. In part two, we talked about what documents you need to prepare in preparation for your mediation. Today, we're going to talk about what you can expect at your mediation and what documents the lender must provide to qualify as participating in good faith. This is Get Modified, the go-to source for loan modification and foreclosure prevention information. And as always, for more information, go to www.falconcreditmanagement.com. At your mediation, the mediator will likely start by introducing herself or himself and telling you a little bit about how the mediation will proceed. If you've prepared your binder, as we have shown in part two, you should only have to take out your notes, pen, paper, and calculator, and any copies you've made for the bank's representative. At this point, you want to pay special attention to the documentation you should be receiving from the bank's representative. I recommend taking notes, and to make this easier, I use a checklist. The first item on my checklist asks, is the bank represented by someone with the authority to modify the mortgage? The mediator will most likely ask this of the bank's representative, but if not, be sure to ask when you're given your opportunity to speak. Second, have the original or certified copy of the deed of trust, the mortgage note, and each assignment of the deed of trust or mortgage note been provided. This is basically a set of receipts and it is done to verify that the loan that you signed when you bought your house is the same loan that the bank is looking to collect on and hopefully modify. Third, have the most current and appropriate appraisals of your property been prepared with an estimate of the short sale value that they may be willing to consider as a part of the negotiation if the loan modification is not agreed upon. Finally, the bank's representative must submit to the mediator under confidential cover a non-binding proposal for resolving the foreclosure and the methodology used in determining the eligibility for a loan modification. Approaching conclusion of your mediation, you may be asked to sign a statement. It is very important that you don't relinquish any rights or sign anything you're not completely clear on. Here's your modification agreement. Great, just what I wanted. We didn't come to the agreement that you wanted and we broke all the rules. Sign here. Well, you're not offering me a permanent change to my mortgage and these are none of the terms I requested. Well, I have to check with the bank and the government, you know how that goes. Oh, and it rained last Tuesday. We could really use some more time, so just go ahead and sign right here. You were required to come here with an offer that would permanently change my mortgage. I don't see it, so I'm not signing this. But we really may be able to get you approved if you just sign. I'm just asking for a little bit of time, that's all. Just sign right here. I have supplied everything you need to do this today. I am not signing anything that is not a permanent change to my mortgage. I came here today and wanted to leave with an agreement, but not one that's going to harm me in the future. And hopefully the mediator will document the same in her statement. something done today. Yeah, that, that would have been nice. Do you maybe want to go back in and try again? The mediator concluded the mediation. Well, uh, do you want to sign something? Here, why don't we uh, draw something up here and you can, you can sign this? Uh, no, no, that's fine. Thank you. It's nice meeting you.
in the event the requirements for a good faith mediation weren't met, a homeowner can file a petition for judicial review with the district court. In part four, we'll talk about the requirements for making a statement of intent to participate in judicial review, but hopefully you won't need that. I'm Damian Falcone, and this is Get Modified.